Well, we are back in today playing around with that little Tundra. It is a nice little machine, but is it ever tippy? <laughs> I'm used to my big machine, and Heather's used to her machine. It's a little wider, although hers is the same, same horsepower, except he, her Heather's is easier to pull because it's got a larger spool on the engine where the cord wraps around. Anyways, we found these nice dead trees right here beside this trail we just made. There's also this broken off one with a bunch of dead ones there. Uh, we're actually getting freezing rain, believe it or not, right now. You can hear it probably. Just landing all around us. I was going to give you a demonstration on how deep the snow is in here. Walk along that tree there and then just step off. I wouldn't jump off, just step off. Just in case there's shards sticking up. Usually there's no branches sticking up like that. Okay, step to... Okay, go ahead. And you're standing on snow, Still right? Standing on snow. <laughs> yeah. It is up to almost almost our belly button. If you were on the ground, it'd be up to our belly yeah. button, right? Yeah, because I'm on. A, I can feel that. See, I'm digging down, and I can feel there's still a lot of snow. Yeah. Like, and I'm still going. It's up to our belly button. You look like you're sitting down in there almost. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> can you get out of there? Do you need help? Not really much crust there, eh? Now stand up, watch, you'll sink right down. It's not too bad there, eh? Oh yeah, now you're going down, for sure. Yeah, you might want to climb out on that log and go. <laughs> it's like walking in quicksand, and then, you're, then your darn pant legs pull up and goes in your boot, right? Oh yeah, my boots are filled. Sorry about that. No, they are filled before. <laughs> oh, okay. <sighs> yeah, at least it's not cold out though, eh? What is it, minus, minus nine, I think, right now, degrees Celsius. That's like a, almost like a spring day for us, minus yeah. nine. No, it is nice. Beautiful. You look like you're cold on the snow that'll come in, though. Was it just the snow hitting you? It's the, it's the... Ice pellets? Yeah. Okay, I wasn't sure. Because yeah. it hits you in the face, the, the ice is cold. I'm lucky I wear glasses, so it doesn't really hit me in the uh, eyeballs, but they sting on the eyes, don't they? They do. Yeah. I didn't mean to pull my sock off. Oh, that happens. That happens, at least it's not like minus 30 in here anymore. Oh no, no. This is a little trail we had broke out earlier, but then there's probably a good, uh, probably a good 14 inches of snow on here now, or maybe more, I'm not sure, yeah. on this trail. We just walked up here and we dropped this tree. Uh, we enjoy doing this for a pastime, and it's so beautiful in here, it's unreal. I love it. I love it. A lot of these trees here, they're just they're just getting too old now. They're, they were, they grew too tight together, and now they're dying off. But I also think the heat, it's getting too warm up here, and I think that's what's killing our jack pine. Jack pine is a northern northern tree, and once it hits a certain temperature in the summer, they all die off, it seems. And it seems like we're hitting that temperature now. But uh, anyways, we're going to get this loaded, and we're going to do some playing on those snowmobiles on the way home. But I got that little tundra running just fine, don't I, Heather? Yeah. I like it. But I don't know if I'm going to keep it though, folks. I really don't know. If I can get something a little different, I don't know. I may may get rid of it. Maybe something with reverse because uh, I'm used to my reverse. I'm not I'm not digging that no reverse thing. <laughs> it's a, you got to have a whole different mindset when you're breaking trail. You don't go too close to a tree or else you got to get off and pull it back manually and straighten her out. Where reverse is so nice, you go too close to a tree when you're breaking trail. You just hit reverse, back up, go around it. And Heather stays a ways back and she just follows my trail so she never she never comes face to face with a tree or a stump. She just stays on my trail that I'm breaking. Yeah. But no reverse breaking trail is a learning curve again. I used to do it all the time when I was younger, but now I'm getting too old for that. I don't want to play with that stuff anymore. But uh, we'll see. Alright folks, so after uh, getting home with that small load of wood today from the uh, from our wood lot. I thought I would show you folks how easy it is to clean one of these carburetors. Now I only have one light set up down here. Um, I could use another one I guess, but I'm only going to use the one light. Anyways, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to uh, clean one of these carburetors off a snow machine or a motorcycle. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to use my little cordless drill for this here, as you can see. Um, I'm going to try to adjust this camera a little wee bit better here. Uh, let me see here. Perhaps that'll be better. Okay, so usually I use a cordless drill just like this to uh, take things apart. I kind of like it. I'll get one of these bits here and I'll stick in here. 
First thing I do is I remove the float bowl. You'll see this is quite easy. Anybody can do one of these. Move this out of the way here. Look at that old gas, eh? that's just old nasty stuff there. That will turn to varnish after a while. There's a float bowl. That's the little floats. You want to make sure the floats, they're not full of gas, shake them lots. Anyways, these go down. You always got that little groove that goes to the top and this little pin here is what lifts on the part of the carburetor here. I will show you in a bit. That goes right back together like that. It's uh, it's not the cleanest in there. I will clean that. First thing you want to do, I like to do, is I like to pop this pin out right here that holds this. That's what the float actuates right here and allows your inlet needle under here to move in or out. Not sure if you can see that needle moving in or out in there. See it's sticking, so uh, it's because it's coming down too far. But I will, I will fix that anyways. <clears throat> um, so let's pop that out. Basically, all you need is just, just something small enough to hammer on this side here. I'll just use my pliers here, just the back of it. You see that little knot? See that right there? Right there. I just tap this. Now that pin comes out a little bit. See this head right here? I'm just going to grab this and I'm going to pull that out. That comes out like that. We don't want to lose that. That's it there. The one end is big. It looks like a nail. I'll set this right here. This part here is what operates. This is what the float pushes on right here. So... <clears throat> Right in here, if I took these out, you would see these here go like these. See these pins? That's what this pushes on. In fact, you can see the notches right here. There's a groove here, there's a groove here, and that's from them sitting like this. When the floats get enough gas in the float bowl, these floats lift up, and it pushes this here, pushes on this this needle here that goes into the seat and doesn't allow any more gas to come in <clears throat> so it only keeps only keeps so much fuel in this float bowl at a time okay so now I pop this little clip off here sometimes I don't put these clips back in sometimes I do it just depends sometimes these clips can cause a problem with the needle valve closing again if you buy a kit put it back in if it's good obviously I mean uh, they're made with them and they are better but once they get old they'll start to hang it up they'll start hanging up your little inlet needle here now this one's a steel one I like these better here see they got a little bit of a ridge you know I would I would be good to put a new kit in there because there is a bit of a ridge starting when I was young and desperate what I would do is just take it and run it around a piece of sandpaper and it would be good again. I, it would get me by. I wouldn't say it would be good again, but it would get me by. Well, that's a 9 millimeter. So I'm just going to take this, take this out. Oh boy, it's tight. There we go. Pull out that inlet uh, needle seat. Unthread that. Be careful, there's usually a washer underneath this plate and one on top. You don't want to lose it. Again, I've put them together without it and it seems to run just fine, but if you got it, don't lose it. Yeah, so there's one. So there's not a gasket on top. If someone's had it apart, and see that? You can see through that. See right through there? You see right through there, that's good. That's, that's pretty clean. You don't want it to be blocked in the center. That will get clean before I put it back together. And there is the little gasket, sorry. There was a gasket on top. That gasket goes on here. I'll put
put it right back here. And there is a gasket underneath as well, but it won't it won't come off until I take this high speed jack. I should use a, a proper wrench for this, but I don't have one, so. Now you see, you wanna look through this too. I can see through, through this, it's a really fine hole. It's gonna be hard to see through it, but I can see through it. You gotta get it the right way. You see that, you can see through that if you get it the right way. You wanna be able to see through the center of that. Because this, when it threads onto here, this here is your high speed jet. The little plunger is still in here, along with this spring. There's the plate that holds that in. Now I can take this part off here. But anyways, this plunger here, this needle here, this is your high speed jet right here. When you give it more throttle, this here lifts, it goes in like this, and it lifts up and it allows more fuel to go through there each time. That's how that works. And to adjust it to give it more fuel, if it's leaning out at high RPM, you take this clip here, see there's grooves on this, you take this clip and you move it down so the pin comes up to allow more, that works like a faucet in your house almost. The higher this is lifted, the more fuel it gets. That's how you adjust the carburetor on these on the high speed. Now that that's out, I'll set that aside. You don't wanna lose your little gasket either. Your little gasket goes right back in here. That thread's on. Obviously I don't have the throttle cable on here. So anyways, it basically goes like this. Your little rubber gasket in there. This spring goes in there. This goes in here. And this little guy here, you see this plate? Once, once your throttle cable is in there, this gets dropped down in here and there is a little nylon washer under here. You don't want to lose that nylon washer right there. And then that circ clip goes on there. So that drops in there and then you see that groove in there where the throttle cable goes on the other side, uh, this side. See the way that's designed there? That drops right down into there and it does not, once a spring once this spring goes in here and pushes against here, it holds that pin down so that pin can't lift up. That's how that operates. Now, high speed jet to clean that. What I do, I probably shouldn't, but I do it. I thread this back in because you want to pop that out. So what I do is I thread that in a little ways. See that pushing in there? Now it'll be fun to get that back out. I don't think it'll go all, yes, it went all the way through there. So there you go. So you pull that out, unthread this, and you make sure that's clean inside there. And it looks clean as well. I'm gonna wipe that down. I blow through it. It's good. It's not plugged at all. Well, it's not tasty either, let me tell you. Now there is a groove where this slides into. You probably can't see it on the camera, but there is a pin right in the center at the bottom of that, and see this groove? There's a groove, it has to line in, line up, and it slides in from the inside of the carburetor. So you see, you can see right through that. That's a big wide open hole right through there. So what we want to do is we want to drop this right back down in there and we want to get it lined up again with that pin in there. That pin is right off to the side here. So this groove, it has to go in here. Now this can be fun doing this. If you have a pair of needle nose pliers, by all means use it. That may be what I need to do, is get a pair of pliers. Usually though, <clears throat> usually though I get it pretty close. 
I've done it before lots of times. Just got to get it turned right way. If I can get it started in there, I can turn it usually. Okay. <laughs> Easier said than done, right? Yeah. Oh, it gives me problems sometimes, but I just got to remember the pin goes towards me and then this gets dropped in here and this gets lined up here. So I just drop it down through here, grab it with my finger, the other finger, and then that groove is right here and it should drop right down in there. See that? You want this cutout part? You see that cutout part to the front. So that's all. It just slides right into there. It's right back in there. You can see that. And then underneath, see, look at this. See on the inlet needle? Watch this. If I can get that out of there, there's some crud in there. Now you would normally put this in and soak it overnight. I don't do that though, I probably should, but I don't. I've never had a lot of problems with them. I managed to clean them pretty good this way. Usually I'll take a little piece of hose like this and blow on it. That's cleaned out really good now. It's really good. Now the only thing that holds this center jet in is this little seat, the high speed jet seat. That's all that holds that in. Anybody can clean one of these. There's no problem at all to them. But the first thing I'm gonna do though, now there's another one in here you wanna pull out too and clean that. Uh, I don't know if I have a screwdriver small enough for that. Back here, I think it's up at the old house. But uh, anyways, it unthreads. And it's really easy to get to too if you have a small screwdriver. I don't, this is just for demonstration purposes how to do this. But uh, okay, before you put this on too, make sure you drop this back down here. It goes down into here, but you have a washer that goes on here though. There's one washer first that drops right onto here. That's one washer. Little, little nylon type washer. And then this guy here, it gets slid right down over here. And then you can put your inlet seat down there. Make sure there's a washer on it too if you have one. That just threads right on there again. You can blow air through these if you want to. You really don't. Usually they clean up pretty good. As long as you pull all the little jets out of it. Now I'm not gonna pull this one out here because I don't have the screwdriver. It just takes a flat screwdriver to reach in there. All my screwdrivers are up at my old place up there, so I'm not gonna do that right now. So this again, just drops right down here. That's the high speed jet. It threads in there. You wanna put that plate on before you put this on. So I'm just gonna tighten this up. I should be using a wrench, I know, but like I say, demonstration purposes. That's, that's good and tight now. So now what I do is I drop in the, the, the inlet needle Looks like this, gets dropped right into here, right in here, that's good. Usually I will take a hose too, there's already a hose on here, I can blow through this. Let me see, where is it, right here. Hear that? When I lift this up, I'm, allowed, I'm able to blow air through there and the gas would come through too. But when I push it down, it'll seal. 
can't blow through it. But as soon as, he, as soon as the fuel starts coming through, it'll open that up. Now once that's in, you take your little clip here, hoping that shows up good, I'll put it in my hand. You see that little, little clip? That's what holds your needle valve in, your inlet needle. Holds it so when your floats drop too much when they run out of fuel, it doesn't jam on you. <clears throat> so I'll just push that in there. That's in there now when you turn it upside down. That inlet seat. Oh boy, I didn't have it in all the way, did I? No, you see this one's wore out. That's what's happened. Remember I said sometimes they, they don't work good? Okay. Now it's good. I just bent it a little more. So it will keep that... It'll keep that inlet needle from falling all the way out now. But sometimes they will wear out these little retaining clips and you have to replace them. See, that's not going to fall all the way out. So now you put your... That's your little uh, plate that pushes on your floats. Or I should say your floats push on it. Now you grab your little pin here. Uh, that's not it. I just had it here a second ago. Didn't go too far. It's right here. That's how that looks like. And it slides through one way, it doesn't go through both. It'll only go through one way. It goes through the wide side, so that would go through here, I believe. Right here. Right there. So you can just push on it with your finger, but what I like to do, is I like to take a small little wrench like this, and I just tap the end of that. See? It's seated in there flush now. Now I take a look. I always look to make sure these here are flush with the body. If they're parallel, then they're usually set pretty darn good. This one looks like it's up a little high, so it looks like it's a little rich. That's not too bad. Now, what I do is, usually I won't put the floats on upside down like this, because the floats, can, they can fall out when you do this, watch, see? So you don't turn them upside down like that. And again, these pins, they always go to the bottom of the float bowl, never to the top. Just like that. So the pins down in there, they're way at the bottom. And what I do too as well, you see, see the different shape? It goes like this, that shape has to line up. So I just turn this up like this, drop that right back on there. I don't know if you've seen that. I just take it, I turn it upside down, drop that right back down on there. Then you've got these little screws that hold the float bowl on. And then back here, you've got these little plates that go on there as well. If you can see those little plates there. All they do is they just hold the overflow hoses in place so they don't flop all over. That's how your screws go. Right there. You got another one here as well. That goes down here as well. You really should tighten these by hand, but I don't. Do it evenly too. There we go. That's all back together. It bounces. So now the high speed jet we put in there, right in there, let me see, right inside here. Again, that's what this needle pushes down on. 
you see this adjustment here this is adjustment for your for your idle all that does is when you thread that in see this part right in here uh, right here where my fingers touching off to the side when I thread this out okay see that going out thread it in it comes in all that does that pushes on this side of the plunger right here and it lifts this up or down to give it more or less throttle and it only goes in one way this large notch goes towards this and this little this little cutaway here that goes towards this pin right in the bottom here see that pin right there it's small it just lines up with that boom goes right down in there so that's what the front would look like so as I turn this in you can watch that crank upwards see that lifting up see going up that's more idle you can see it at the back probably clearer so if I thread this out that plunger should go down and cut off the air and it also cuts off the fuel as well so there you go that's all the way down so you can see there there should be there should be barely any light through there it will be a little but not too much so now if I thread that in you'll see that lifting up a little bit and that's opening up the throttle to make it idle more so that's how you adjust the idle on these Makunis right here now there is usually this one don't have the right there there's the idle air mixture screw right on the side that's where you adjust that so that's pretty much it aside from once you hook your throttle cable up inside there this little tin plate goes down again this tin plate goes down I just put it upside down here it flipped on me so this little groove here is that little bent part it goes down in that grooved area that holds the throttle cable from popping up it also holds that pin from coming out it just flipped upside down again okay so now the spring would go in here against that that spring would go down your cable your throttle cable would be in the center here that goes down there and then you would have this guy here where your throttle cable would go through and there's that little rubber washer to keep from drawing air in around here and that can make them rev too that can make them run funny like just a bad seal and this here would just get threaded right back on there that's pretty much the basics of these carburetors now you can run wire in through all the little ports inside once you have it apart if you want usually I blow them out something like this it doesn't look that that bad this little line here is for your primer line so you'd have one of these you would have a hose running off the straight part would go into here to inject fuel into the back of the carburetor and then this here you would draw it from the fuel line coming from the tank there would be a T in your fuel line and this would when you pull this out when you pull this out there's a valve it causes it to draw fuel from the tank through here and when you push it in it pushes fuel from here out and in to the back of the carburetor through that little hole so this is what you would call um, uh, it'd be on the manifold side not the ported side I believe this front part here would be the ported side and the back would be the man manifold side and you can see that going up and down It'd be just like if you're giving it throttle it would rev and that pin in the center here would lift up and down allowing more fuel to come up around there and go through the ports and that's pretty much a Makuni carburetor in a nutshell folks very simple yeah anyways I hope you enjoyed that video folks on uh, how, how I uh, clean these Makuni carburetors I didn't show you that center I didn't show you the uh, uh, low speed 
fuel jet, but uh, it just threads out with a small screwdriver and you just make sure there's a bunch of little holes in there, you make sure they're all clean. You blow air through it if you want, put it back together and, and you should be all set to go. You folks take care. Anyways, that's pretty simple folks. That's that's all there is to those uh, Makuni carburetors. There's not much to these, these style. Typically you find them on snowmobiles, uh, the older snowmobiles, some motorcycles as well, but they're pretty easy to, uh, to, to clean. Um, some of them actually, some of them, this part here is actually opened up and threaded and that's where they have a choke. This one doesn't have that opened up because it, like I say, has the primer that you pump to, to squirt air in them. The ones that don't have the primer, this part is opened up right here. And when you pull on a lever, there's a plunger in there that lifts up and the fuel goes right through it. It, it allows the, the floats to lift up higher and uh, yeah, it just dumps it right through there. Anyways, you all take care folks and uh, we should talk to you tomorrow. Bye bye.